This episode is going to be about the Vim way of typing. And it's probably one of the most important videos in this video course. <laughs> so um, it's not going to be that much about the Vim editor itself, but more like the way of thinking. But let me start with the story. Um, two years ago, I was at the Java Land conference in Germany, and I met this great guy named Dan Allen, which, uh, who is the uh, project lead of the ASCII Doctor project. Besides a lot of other projects, apparently his day has more hours than mine. And we were talking about ASCII Doc. If you don't know ASCII Doc um, already, it's a really nice uh, lightweight mockup language, but uh, that's another story. And however, we were talking about this markup language and um, trying out several things, talking about the syntax and so on and so forth. And he was using his Vim editor. And while we we were talking and showcasing several things, he was moving around and deleting and inside asserting words almost as fast as he was talking. And just watching that was totally impressive. And then I said to myself, well, actually now I have to start to look into this Vim thing. I mean, everybody probably has heard of that, but I don't know how many uh, how many actually try it. So, I, so I thought, okay, now you will try that out. You will try the Vim editor, and you will get into all this uh, this weird stuff nobody understands. And, however, long story short, this turned out to be probably one of the best developer productivity decisions I've I've ever made um, so far. But. Um, let me tell you the, the main concepts, and it's actually not that much about the, the shortcuts and the editor itself, but more on the way of thinking, of the uh, way of typing. Because the Vim editor has two, in my eyes, main concepts. The first and most important is, while using the computer, take your hands and put them um, on the home row of your keyboard. That means F and J and stay there ideally all time. And the second is use composable and reusable commanding keyboard shortcuts, like applying the principle of least surprise, the principle of don't make me think. And with these two concepts like applied, you can be, in my eyes, really productive. But um, however, let me, let me show you the and the Vim editor um, just briefly because there are tutorials out there which explain that way better than uh, that I could but that you get uh, that you understand the idea because as I said in a, in a video before the idea is to minimize context switches and stay in your home row because even if you use um, a lot of keyboard shortcuts using the command or the alt key or the arrow rows and so on and so forth, you always have to switch your position and your context as well from one position to the other. May, uh, maybe you have to look where you're going. And even though it's just a short cut in, in your flow, it, it kind of draws your attention. It, it gets you out of the flow a little bit because you can just really just focus on what you wanted to do. And now the way how it works is, that you, you're not using command or L for any kind of um, commands and shortcuts, but you use your normal keys like J, K and so on and so forth. And the way this works is that you have in, in Vim, for example, for the editor, several layers of layers of commands, layers of actions. Um, first of all, and this is probably the um, biggest confusion of the Vim editor at all, if you start the application like this, then you're in the normal mode, so-called normal modes. There are several of these modes, and this one is not the one where you can type as you would expect it from an editor, and this is the reason why Vim is so weird, rather than you have to switch into another mode where you can actually type. And now you obviously don't um, trigger any commands when you hit the keys, rather than you just type. And then you can use all kind of uh, commands in the normal mode. And this is that mode that can actually move you around. And now you don't see that I'm sticking with my hands just on the home row all time. And the way this works is H, J, K and L for the movements. 
Actually, once you get used to this pattern, it's just as fast as using the arrow rows. But you don't have to do the context switch. That's a nice thing. And well, you switch into the writing mode by hitting I for insert in this case, or hitting all kind of other letters uh, that would trigger another command, and you go back by hitting escape. And I don't want to show you Vim, actually, because there are tutorials out there that could do this way better than I can, but just the main concepts. And this concept of moving around is one. Um, going back with your escape key, the reason, and as I said, you want to be on your home row as much as possible. Um, the escape key is used for that. Is actually back then the escape key in the original layout of the editors uh, of the author of the editor was where I think now the caps lock key is. And actually on my computer I remapped the caps lock key to be escaped because who needs caps lock anyway, right? So I don't need to do this to go up until the escape key, but just can do it. Um, with your little finger. And a few other things um, I did on that, I, I reconfigured on that editor was, for example, these um, relative line numbers here. The reason why I'm doing this is that you can basically go um, up and down much faster intuitively. For example, if I want to go to this word, uh, to the second line, I just type four and then up, sorry if I could type the correct number for and then up and then I'm on the appropriate line. And the same is true if, for example, I want to delete for and down. Having that said, and I don't want to go too much into detail actually here, you will reuse your composable commands. That means one command in the normal layout here always consists of something to do plus a movement. For example, delete or substitute or um, select like in the visual mode like this and for example I will go forward to move um, to the next word or backwards to the last one and then I can say oh not only move forward but delete forward and it deletes until the next word or uh, from this delete backwards and so on and so forth and this is the, the way of, of thinking that you can apply the same logics of your um, key commands all over again and it will work as expected. That means if I say delete and then two lines down, it will do the same. And I don't have to remember a new command for this, for the special action delete two lines down, rather than I can just compose them, which is quite nice um, to use it. And actually there are some applications out there that use use this approach and I would say a good crafted application in terms of key codes um, uses this way. For example, IntelliJ does, does I think a, good, a pretty good job with it. If it, it has some kind of a keyboard uh, shortcuts and you can apply them pretty much in the same way in, in all kind of menus. For example, with the Alt key plus something and um, you can just do your commands ex as expected. Um, however, there are some applications that, that really implement this way of, of thinking. For example, for Gmail, there is an advanced um, key, key code setting that basically um, allows you to, to use this HJKL movement to move around and then some mail commands like open, reply and so on and so forth that are basically easily, easily reachable from your home row which is a nice way of being really productive. And I, and I saw that once you, once you can kind of apply these ideas, then you will be faster than just switching your, um, switching your commands to, to something else, like switching a finger position to the um, control plus something or alt plus something combination, because this always moves you away from your basic um, hand position. And then you probably have to look into your keyboard and you, you kind of like distracted. And actually this, this was something what I personally discovered when I used this BIM approach more and more that you, you kind of change the way of, of thinking of, uh, of using a program because then in the editor I, I'm not really thinking about the, um, the way I have to type and the way when I want to delete some words or substitute something 
in the same way as, as I did before in normal editors. Because in, you actually just, um, just notice that when, once you, you experience that uh, whim way of typing, I would say. Because then you actually see how annoying it can be using control left, uh, left, right or home and end to move your cursor around. Because it always drags your hand position to somewhere else. And then you have to go back. So this is, I would say, a quite productive way of typing and even changes the way of, of how you think. Because um, once I got used to this idea, as I said, to use um, this editor in that way or to use several applications in that way, then you actually like the idea of being in that home row. I can just do whatever I'm thinking about and not worrying about using the mouse, using other commands um, mode. And you want to have that in other applications and even in your operating system as much as possible. And this is actually the reason why I already told that I'm, I'm using Linux with um, with another window manager that can be used from the um, solely from the keyboard. And actually, this keyboard, um, this window manager i3 uses this Vim way of of moving around. That means holding the Windows key plus left and right, you will actually switch the windows and so on and so forth. And you can split the windows um, appropriately using just your fingers on the home row, which is, I would say, really productive if you not have to move your hands around. And this is um, basically most of the ideas and, and the main concepts of this way, I really encourage you to at least take a look at this. This is the one uh, of the tu uh, tutorials I like the most, but just um, Google for some Vim tutorials and um, ideally some tutorials that at first explain the concepts rather than give you a bunch of uh, key com commands because you, you want to understand the way of thinking and then the, the good tutorials um, give you some recommendations of which commands are really uh, helpful for the beginning especially and then you will um, you will learn your way around but I can I can tell you uh, Vim has a really steep learning curve so apparently pro probably don't try it out in your nine to five job because you will be totally unproductive the first uh, uh, hours and days it took me for example I would say three two to three weeks to be then faster than before in, in typing and moving and everything and then I got, got kind of into the idea so that I can I would say really use it rather than looking at, at every command all the time and and undoing wrong uh, wrong commands so at first if you try it out don't do it in front of a colleague you will uh, look like somebody who's using a computer for the first time but um, it's nice that you can that then you will um, eventually improve. So I encourage uh, everyone to at least try this way out. And I personally uh, saw that once I got used the, to this idea, I actually don't use anything else right now. So I just use Vim for any kind of writing right now. Of course, IntelliJ for um, programming or an IDE for programming and all the IDEs um, have a Vim emulation, which is nice. And, and everything else I just do do it in in Vim and I would say once you get used to the idea then you can kind of survive every fancy um, front-end hipster editor uh, sublime Adam and and all these things because you're just as fast as they are with all the fancy features because um, you can just apply other ideas that these kind of uh, editors can't because you're just in the insert mode and they don't even have all the other kind of modes and so I hope I could encourage you to at least try that out. I know that this won't happen to, uh, to anybody and it's, it's a kind of crazy way of typing, but maybe you, you get the idea and maybe I could encourage you to, to try it at least. Thanks for watching.